started to nail them about one out of every five or six, right? How many of us would have quit <laughs> before you got that first, uh, that, that real first Eureka moment where it all shifted? So anyway, just wanted to keep that clear because I know uh, the consistency is not where all the shiny objects and enthusiasm is, but it's where all the money's at. And progress. Money just said I have five deals in motion right now. So we just got an email the other day and I'm only going to read part of it because part of it was personal. But it says, here's an update on my business performance. Performance metrics, 62 calendar days since July 10th. Lead generation efforts, number of notes sent, 124. Number of calls made, 443. Total conversations, 372. Door knocks, 56. Events attended, 1. Business to business conversations, 17. Appointments, 12. Appointments converted, 7. Appointment conversion rate, 58.33%. How incredible is that? Signed buyers, five. Signed sellers, two. Guys, I love these emails. I love these type of things. It's all from the consistency of this prospecting method, of the game, of the points. These are the type of results that you guys are getting because you're putting in the work, because you're putting in your points, and because you're showing up every day. And like, guys, I love celebrating the prospecting and getting the points. The deals are just the side benefit. I know that sounds crazy, but the deals get boring to me where this is awesome. Like these are the emails that like are why I do it, why Rich does it, Eric and Rob and everybody else here. I mean, it's just, it's been phenomenal. So just keep pushing. I know as we're approaching the holiday season you know, we're going to start with Halloween. It's going to be fun. You're going to get your costumes. People are going to have parties. We're going to kick off into Thanksgiving and all the other holidays through to the new year. Don't let distractions get in your way. Now is the time to dig deep on your consistency. Start making your plans on how you're going to be consistent through those times. No, let me piggyback on that because I was listening to your ratio. Kim is closing one out of 23 contacted appointments. So to give you an idea of like, oh, I can't close 50%. Now she just knows that to get two deals a week, she needs to talk to 200 people, right? So now that we have the algorithm, it's just a matter of how much gas or how much break you want to put on it. So I don't want to get into Eric's uh, uh, real estate space here because I actually came on here to learn as well. So uh, no, I mean, this is great. It's a great segue for what I'm going to talk about today. So the reality is that, you know, you need to know your numbers. That's what, you know, Joe was saying. That's what Rich is saying. If you know your numbers, you know, you then have a business in place, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about, you know, giving you a system today that allows you to really see and hold a magnifying glass up to your business so you could really hold yourself accountable like no real estate coach can. Um, I want to start off today's meeting. This is going to sound a little hokey, but I want to start off today's meeting with a quote that I read to myself every morning because I think that you want to program yourself. You want to be in the right mindset and I'd just like you to listen to this with an open mind for one second, right, before I delve into today's lesson. I don't know if anybody knows Abraham. It is the quote. So it's a quote that I'm going to read you. And again, I start off my day every morning reading this just to put myself in the right mindset. So here we go. All of the resources that you will ever want or need are at your fingertips. All you have to do is to identify what you want to do with it and then practice the feeling place of what it will feel like when that happens. There is nothing, there is nothing that you cannot be or do or have. You are blessed beings. You have come forth into this physical environment to create. There's nothing holding you back other than your own contradictory thought. And your emotion tells you you're doing that. Life is supposed to be fun. It is supposed to feel good. You are powerful creators and write on schedule, savor more, fix less, laugh more, cry less, anticipate positivity more, anticipate negativity less. There is nothing more important than you feel good. Just practice that and watch what happens. There is great love here for you. We are complete. Just sit with that, breathe that in for a second. You can do anything, you can be anything, you could have anything that you choose to have. Stop letting all of this crap get in the way. Today, I wanna to talk about how to set you up in a system. 
Because I think if you don't have a system in place, if you don't have clear goals, but not just goals, because anybody could pick a number out of a sky and have a goal, right? But what action items do you need to take? What specific tasks do you need to do and how much of it do you need to do in order to acquire or exceed the set expectations? So I'm gonna go through today what we call an economic model with you. I'm gonna ask somebody from that's participating today to jump in and I will put together your economic model. The person who's gonna jump in, I'm gonna ask you not to be long-winded. Remember that less is always more. I wanna get through this and I wanna make sure everybody is clear how to have a model in place and be able to track all of those results. Before putting this model in place, I wanna talk about goal setting just for a couple of moments here. Number one, your goals absolutely must be in writing. If they're not in writing, they're worthless to me. I walk around as hokey as this sounds with a goal card. I don't know if you could all see this, right? And the back of the goal card, it says, I am so happy and grateful now that, and I talk as if everything is in the present tense. For me, I am so happy and grateful now that I have over 10,000 agents in my EXP organization. Yada, 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 yada. So anything, anything personal or professional that's important to me, it is written down, it is on my goal card, and it is carried with me throughout my entire day. Number two, your goals can't be a layup. Remember, anything that is worth anything is worth working for. Your goals need to be a stretch where you look back over your shoulder and go, you know, holy crap, I was able to accomplish that, right? That feeling of accomplishment will soar how you think about yourself. Three, you need to decide what you want and what you're willing to give up in order to achieve what you want. Folks, point being is life is about trade-off, right? Rob has a daughter who is going to be in the Olympics. Do you think that just happens naturally? I mean, think of the amount of time, effort, dedication, and commitment. You know, you can't want to have a huge real estate organization and say, you know what, I'm going to take every day off between two and four and watch Jerry Springer's and pick my toes, right? That's not real, right? You need to, what you put into something is what you're going to get out of it. So you need to decide what you want and what you're willing to give up. I want you to communicate your goals to your significant others. Communicate your goals to your managers. Communicate your goals to as many people as possible. And why I do that is the following. I think shame or embarrassment is the one thing that we as human beings will do absolutely anything to avoid. When you put it out there and say to somebody, hey, I am committed to doing this, you'll break your ass to getting it done. And lastly, I want your goals on your nightstand. I want you to take note of every day your accomplishments. So when you go to bed, you could take a yellow highlighter and go, I'm wonderful, I'm outstanding, I'm terrific. You don't need anybody else laying next to you in bed because your ego is so inflated. Folks, that's a good thing to be. When you could take note of what you've been able to accomplish and put that in play. So I want you to think about that as we get into an economic model today. We're going to build this out. I want you to have this in place. I want everyone in today's call to make a commitment that you will have this economic model in place. If you get stuck on it, I'm willing to take part of my week and walk you all through it. I'll give you my cell phone number. Call me up. There is no reason whatsoever, zero, to procrastinate you doing this. So I'm going to give you my cell phone number. If you get stuck in the model, pick up the phone and call me. We'll do it in five minutes. Sound like a plan? Cool. All right, Rob, you want to pull up the uh, economic model for me, me pal? You All right. Got it. Who, who today has been in real estate a minimum of three years? Three years. By the way, Eric, I know 50 people are going to start texting me in just a second. Who's got the, who, are we going to get this? Yes, you're going to get this. So let me go ahead and head that off at the pass. So I have been asked to sell, so, so several brokerages have asked me to sell them this. I have never done that. I'm giving this to you. If you will take the time to really embrace this, you are going to go, holy crap. Adriana, longer in real estate. So I want a minimum of three years in real estate so we could walk through the model. So Diane, how long have you been in real estate for? You're on mute. Sorry, sorry about that. Since 2005, but professionally since 2019. Okay, so, we're so basically three quickly. years. So we're going to go through this really quickly, the model, so we can get done. At the end, I want to leave some time for Q&A so people could ask me. So in front of you is the economic model, right? 
Yes. How it works is the following way. If you look at the economic model on the left-hand side, we are going to put numbers into wherever you see the color blue. And you're going to see in the economic model, what we're simply going to do is color by number. I'm going to ask Diane questions that coincide with the questions numbers one through 12 on the right-hand side of the model. I'm going to ask Diane questions, and we're simply going to plug the number in where you see one question number, question number one on the right-hand side is going to correlate with the model, and we're going to plug the numbers in there. So as we put together the model, I want you to think big, Diane. I want you to get outside of your comfort zone. When I, we talk about numbers, right, I don't want to hear what you fantasize about doing, what you think you're going to do. I want you to commit. I want this to be an integrity I want this to be about integrity where we are looking at you and listening to you and you're saying, I am absolutely going to do the following. You ready? Absolutely. We're going to go to number one, right? So Rob's going to click right in number one where you see blue right in the mo model. It's a pyramid. So it starts at the bottom, Rob, the very bottom right there. Okay. okay. So Rob, right there in number one, Diane, not what you fantasize about, not what you dream you're going to do. How much money are you committed to making in terms of net income? Has nothing to do with taxes. So how much money are you going to make over the next 12 months? 300,000. Okay, perfect. So Rob's going to go right in there and put $300,000, okay? Right into the model. Excellent. Cool. All right. Number two is your cost of sales. This is typically your split with your broker. Well, we have a $16,000 cap in place, right? So 16% of 16% of $300,000. If it was so there's a cap of $16,000, so your so 10% of 300,000 would be 30. So 5, it's about 4%. Do you see how I got that, everybody? Yes. Uh -huh. So if Diane is making, I just did that in my head. I did back of the envelope, but you could feel free to do it in a calculator. So Diane's cost of sale is her split with her broker. At eXp, we have the good fortune of being able to keep more of our commissions because we have a $16,000 cap in place. So if Diane, in fact, makes $300,000 for cost of sale, her commission that she's going to pay her broker would, in fact, be 4%. Okay. Diane, question number three. What are your expenses in identifying your buyer and seller clients, marketing, and then absolutely closing on that transaction? So it's a listing. What does it cost you? I'm going to tell you rule of thumb. It's typically between 3 to 5% unless you're buying lots of lead flow from companies like Zillow or the other companies that are out there. But what are your expenses to identify a buyer and seller client and to then go through the contract period and ultimately close on the, on the subject property? That's something I'm working on right now because I've never calculated well, work, that. Work before. with me. So give me an, yeah. an, just an idea. <clears throat> I would say I, right now, I'm spending at least $1,000 a month. So, what percentage of your expenses do you think? Well, what percentage of your expenses do you think, do you, out of the 300000 what percentage does it cost you to identify a buyer and seller and then market the subject property accordingly? Diane, we're going to have to pick a number just for the yeah. sake of time. Sure. Um, 500 for each one. So $1,000. So what say. percentage would that be? $1,000 each Times. one. And it's I times not, that by 4%. Not 30%. I'm going to put in 5%. No. I'm going to put in 5% here. Okay. Okay. So that would be $100. Hey, Rob, you got you put it in the wrong. Um, yeah. 5%. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So it's okay. And listen, Diane, I know you've never done this before, but you'll be able to give this some thought. Rule of thumb. Typically, I'm going to say 3 to 5%. If you're buying internet leads, it's going to go up, right? Yeah. So let's just use rule of thumb. So watch how this model is starting to come together, Diane. In order for yeah. Diane to net $300,000, she's going to have to gross how much money, Diane? Look at number um, G right there. G. $329,670. Is this now providing some type of clarity to Diane how much money she has to make in order to net $300,000? Yeah. 
What we're going to continue doing is I'm going to continue to going to, going to ask Diane questions that are again on the right hand side of this model where it says blue inputs legend and I'm going to continue to plug the numbers in four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to work my way up the pyramid. So you'll take a, you'll take note in the economic model on the left hand side is your seller's column. Mm -hmm. On your right hand side is your buyer buyer's column. You ready? Next question, yes. Diane. Question number mm -hmm. four. Rob's going to input right into where it says 60% right there. He's just remember, what color do you input into? Blue. Wherever you see the blue. All right, Diane, you're doing great. What percentage of your business, Diane, is going to come from working with sellers, taking listings? I'd say 80%. Okay. So Rob's going to put an 80. Watch what happens. It populates the model. So right here, you do not have to put in buyers. If it's 80%, it populates for you. Diane now is going to get 20% of Diane's business is going to come from home worker with her working with buyers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Question number five. You ready, Diane? Yep. When you are working with sellers taking listings, what, what commission are you earning? Is it 3%? Is it 3%? Say it again. I, you know, we put two and we put three, but I always calculated at two and a half to account for expenses. Do you want us to put the three in here? No, because we already took out your expenses in the bottom okay. of the model. So perfect. So three percent. Okay, perfect. That's question number five. Let's go to question number six. Diane, when you're working with buyers, what is the commission that you are typically earning? What is your average commission? Three percent. Awesome. Cool. Let's go to question number seven. Mm -hmm. Question number seven, when you, what is your average sales price when you take a listing? 750,000. Boy, I want to live where you live. <laughs> 750,000, Rob, zero, zero. That helps. That's awesome, okay. And when you are working with buyers, typically the same? A little bit lower, uh, about 500. Cool, all right. So we're gonna put 500 right in there. guys. And gals, how easy is it, to, is it to plug in these numbers, right? This is a no-brainer. Watch how this model is going to give Diane clarity how to run her business, okay? Question number nine. Diane, when you go out on a listing appointment, how, what percentage of the time are you successful in, ap, in actually capturing that listing? So when you go out on a listing appointment, what percentage of the time are you actually capturing the listing appointment? Does the seller choose you as their listing agent? I'd say at least 80%, sometimes okay. higher. Let's, leave let's just do there. 80 because I want to be able to. Okay, cool. Question number 10. When you are doing a buyer's consultation, right? When you meet with the buyer and you are interviewing the buyer, right, Diane? As much as the buyer is interviewing you, right? You just want to see if you want to be in a relationship with a person. So you're interviewing the buyer as much as the buyer is interviewing you. What percentage of the time do you elect to represent that buyer? The buyer chooses you as their buyer's agent. I'd say 50%. Okay, cool. Okay, question number 11. Two more questions and we're done with the model. Question number 11 is when you secure a listing, what percentage of the time does that listing sell? And I know you're a good agent, so I know that number is going to be very high. You don't take overpriced listings. Yeah, I'd say 90%. Okay, I love it. Okay, last question, Diane. Question number 12. When you have a relationship with a buyer, you have elected to represent them and they have chosen you as their buyer's agent, what percentage of the time do you ultimately, and that's the operative word, identify a subject property that that buyer closes on? I'd say 90%. Okay, cool. Your model is done. Let's take a look at this together. Can we all agree that a listing appointment and a buyer's consultation should never take more than an hour? Fair, is that fair, Diane? Diane, did I freeze or did you? Sorry, guys. My internet keeps saying it's unstable, so... Okay. If I don't hear something, I apologize. It's okay. All right. So could we agree that a typical listing presentation and a buyer's consultation should not take more than an hour? Absolutely. We have said over and over again, the great coaches like Mike Sherrard, like Kirk Chua, like Elizabeth, like Joe, like Gail, I can go on and on. If I'm forgetting somebody, I forget. I apologize. 
But you know, we've all talked about less is more. So if you're spending more than an hour in a buyer's consultation or a listing presentation, the window of opportunity has extended for one to put one's foot in one's mouth. So let's, for the sake of today's example, let's say your average appointment takes an hour, okay? In order for Diane to net $300,000, she is going to have to gross $329,670. Diane is going to have to go, Rob, could you go up to one point where it says 1.36 at the very top of the model? Diane has to go out on 1.36 listing appointments a month. This is not what she has to capture. She simply has to meet with 1.36 sellers each and every month. On the buy side, Diane needs to Diane needs to meet with less than one buyer in order to hit her number, has less than one buyer appointment. She actually needs to meet with 0.81. So in order for Diane to hit her goals, Diane needs to go out on 1.36 plus 8.1. Diane has to go out on a little bit more than two, two hours of appointments each and every month. Do you see what I'm doing here? All I'm doing is I'm adding, I'm saying if each appointment is an hour and she's got to go out in 1.36 appointments to meet with a seller and 0.81, if I add the two, those two together, Diane has to go out on a little bit more than two hours of appointments every month. Diane, I want to ask your question. Would you agree with the following statement? That the only time you are in a winning position to make money and have success at your career of choice, selling property, is when you're in front of a buyer or seller. Correct. Diane, how many hours do you work a week as a real estate professional? Is it 40? Is it 50? Give me another. At least, yeah, at least 40, probably more than that. Okay. So we're going to say 40. Okay. So Diane is working 160 hours a week as a real estate professional. In order to hit her numbers, she only has to go out on two hours of appointment, two hour, a little over two hours of appointments. If 10% of 140 hours a month would be 14, 5% would be seven, two and a half percent would be three and a half. Do you realize that Diane, if she spent only 2% of her work time putting herself in a winning position, going out with buyers and sellers, she is going to hit her numbers. Diane, I'm going to play a game with you. You ready? Okay. You are now the sales manager of Apple. You are the sales manager of Toomey. You are the sales manager of Rolex. If your sales professional was spending less than 2% of their time putting themselves in a winning position so they could have the success that they want, need, and desired, and you were their manager, what would you do? Let's not cut work, play with words here. If your salesperson who are managing them was only out 2% of the time, putting themselves in a winning position to hit their numbers, what would you do? You'd want to fire them. You would fire their ass is what you would do. You yep. would absolutely terminate the relationship because they would not yep. be hitting metrics that you had in place, measurables, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I am. If you took your business seriously, if you took, took your business to heart, would you say it's almost virtually impossible that of 140 hour work hours a month that you could secure two and a half appointments? Yes. Okay. Let's look at numbers 11 and 12. Diane, in order for you to be successful, you only have to capture 1.09 listing appointments every month, right there, Rob. 1.9. Yeah. So if you take a little bit more then one listing a month, and um, to the right of that, number 12, and if you put less than one buyer under contract each and every month, you will absolutely hit your goal of making, of, of grossing $329,670 and putting $300 in your pocket. Diane, what would that mean to you and your family? It would change my life. How important is your life to you? extremely important. So why would you squander this opportunity? Why would you let that slip through your fingertips? You yeah, and I, I mean, and everybody on today's call, if we're really looking in the mirror and taking our own inventory, know that if we're taking our career seriously, Diane and each and every one of you, if you were spending two, four, 5% of your entire work month, 
simply going out on appointments, getting face to face to people and putting your position, putting yourself in a position to win each and every one of you wouldn't just hit your goals. You'd absolutely blow through it. Crush them. Let's stop here for a second and let's answer any questions before I get into the performance tracker. And you're going to love, love the performance tracker. Huh. Does this have an, do you have anything included in this that has like the, um, how many contacts you're like for going into working backwards, like the, how many calls you have to make to set appointments and then how many appointments, or is that just being tracked in Rockstar? Is we, that... we, could do, we could do that as well. I could show that as well. So I, I did that. I was not going to really talk about that today. I didn't want to overwhelm you. I think last time I spoke and spoke and spoke, and I think a lot of things fell to the wayside. So I wanted to be careful that I didn't um, that I didn't get to in your head today. But it's a really good question. I, I'll, I'll go over that on the periphery. And if you want, you can call me offline and I'll be happy to address that or I'll jump back on the call. Uh, whenever Rob, you know, whenever you guys see fit, I'd be happy to jump back on the call. We do have Q&A, Eric. Ah, we could do yep. that as well. Yep. So Eric, you, you just walked on water for us today, man. We really appreciate that. You, you make us feel like we can do this right now, right? And we will do this right now. Thanks for sharing this and breaking it down in such simplistic terms. Oh, you're welcome. And, and illustration. Thank you. You know, I thank you for saying that because, you know, there were times that I didn't think I could do it. You know, I was 30 years old and I didn't have a job. I was always, you know, I always said I smelled like a, I smelled like a rose on the outside and stunk like a skunk on the inside because I had no sense of accomplishment. The reality is that each and every one of you could do it. If I'm living proof of that. Folks, I was bankrupt four years ago. Zero money, zero, not that. And the reality is, you know, you got to want it for yourself. If you don't love yourself, you got to want it for your kids or your significant other. But there's no reason, none, that you can't want, be, or do anything that you want. I mean, come on. Thanks for saying that. You know, I have so much freaking respect for Mike Sherrard. You know, I've gotten to know Mike through this process a little bit. And what Mike just said, I mean, do you understand what Mike has been able to accomplish and Elizabeth Riley of people that are the coaches here? For Mike to be so transparent with you and say, you know, I have self that every day. I mean, Mike, I mean, just think about that. He's the number one freaking recruiter at EXP. He's blowing people out of the water. And to hear him say that and share that with you, it's about you taking action each and every month each and every day and putting yourself in a winning position. Any other questions before I get into how to track all of this? All right. I love, I love Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So we, so guys, I want you to remember, I want you to remember the numbers here, right? So in order in order um, to hit your goals, we had to go out in 1.3 listing appointments a month, right? Had to go out in appointments, 1.3 listing appointments a month for, for listings. Buyer appointments was 0.81. And we only had to capture 1.09. We had to be successful, but we actually secured the listing. And we had to take 0.41 listings. If Rob clicks at the tab at the very bottom, you're going to see 2023 performance tracker. Watch this. You're going to love this. At the end of every month, at the end of the month, you are going to come into this model and you're going to plug in six simple numbers. Do you know that that you know that magnifying glass that women use to look in the mirror and they put on their makeup? I don't know why anybody would do that, by the way. I looked in that thing a couple of months ago and the mirror fell to the floor. I thought, man, I am the ugliest human being in the world. But what I love on a more serious note is that holding up, the beautiful thing about that is we're going to hold up a magnifying glass to your business. You are going to be able to track each and every month if you are on track to exceed the expectations that you have in place or not. So you don't have to wait six months into the year and go, holy crap, what happened? We are going to take a snapshot of your business so you and you alone can feel good by taking the appropriate course of action. Let's take the month of January, for, ex for example, here, Rob, okay? You are gonna go into January. And again, the numbers, remember how many appointments? How many appointments? We had to go on 1.3 listing appointments. What color do you input into? I'm gonna keep on asking you this question. You are going to come in and you are only gonna input into blue. I'm gonna give you the answers here, Rob. 
So in order to hit our goals, we had to go on 1.36 listing appointments a month. You are going to put in how many actual appointments, not how many listings you captured, but how many appointments that you went on. Let's say for the sake of this example, you went on two appointments that month, right? What's going to happen is you are having a positive variance, meaning you are ahead of your goal by 6.64. What does that indicate to you and I and everybody listening, Diane, to today's call? What that's saying is that you are spending enough time prospecting. You are going out there and meeting with buyers and sellers. You are doing the job that you are supposed to do. If you had a negative variance, what does that say? Negative variance means that you did not go on enough listing appointments. For example, if you only had one listing appointment for the month, you would have a negative variance, meaning you would be behind your goal that magnifying glass that we would hold up would give you a snapshot of saying you didn't spend enough time in your business working on your business, okay? The next number is actual listings taken, okay? That number is one, right? We're gonna put in how many listings we took for the month, okay? So if that number is one and you had to take 1.9 listings, you would have a negative variance of 0.09. Does anybody want to, does anyone want to guess what that would tell us? What would that mean? What would that indicate? What, what skill set would you need to work on? Because the beauty here is we can measure what we're doing well and what we're not doing well, and then take the appropriate course of action. So if I'm getting the appointments and I'm not securing the appointments, what do I need to work on? Anybody? Rob, what do I need to work on? Rich? Listen, presentation. Yeah, Paula. You need to work in your listing presentation skills or objecting hand handling skills. But that would tell us we need to work on our presentation skills, right? Every month, every month, in order to hit our goals here, we have to make 21,978, right? Where you see closed listing goal. In order to make that 300,000 or 326,000 gross, we have got a gross just from listings 21,978 dollars. What you're going to do is each and every month, you are going to put in how much money you received, how much money EXP gave you that came from your listings. Let's say for the sake of this example, you made $25,000. Okay, you would have a positive variance, Paula, of $3,022, and you would be 12.09% above your January goal. Now, I don't want you to focus for a second. When you see 21,978, some people are going to go, oh my God, that is way too much stress. No, 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 no. We're not going to focus on that. We're not going to focus on the money. We're going to focus on the action. If you just simply go out in 1.36 appointments and capture one, you will hit that number. That is the only thing I don't want you to, this is the only thing I want you to focus on. I don't want you to focus on the 21,978. There are people like Elizabeth Riley, that number is well over $100,000 a month. If I was coaching Elizabeth, I'd say, I don't care about the 100,000. I care that you go out on, I'm just making these numbers up, Elizabeth, that you go out on six listing appointments a month and you capture a minimum of four of them. I want you to focus on the action. I want you to focus on the activity. I don't want you to focus on the dollar amount. It will alleviate stress. Does that make sense to everybody? Every month, you are going to fill this in. Folks, that was three seconds. You could plug in those numbers, how many appointments you went on, how many appointments, how many, how many listing appointments you went on, how many listings that you took, and then the dollar amount that you captured. That will give you a strong screenshot of your business. Rob, if you go down to buyers, bud, you're going to do the exact same thing with buyers. I'm not going to, I'm not going to break Rob's horns here and have him fill in the numbers. But in this example, we had it go on, go on 0.81 buyer presentations a month. We're going to actually in blue, you put in the. I action. can't get your. Um, I can't get the name though to change from me to you. Sorry, Brooke. I think she was on the phone. I'm sorry. I think she yeah, was okay. just unmuted. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Go. Go ahead, Eric. So. If you go on 0.81 listing appointments a month, in this scenario, again, you input in the blue, 
let's say we went on three, Diane went on three, pardon me, three buyer appointments, Diane would have a positive variant. She'd be ahead of her buyer's goal of 2.19. Congratulations, Diane. You would give yourself a pat on the back, right? It's a sense of accomplishment. Diane has to put under contract 0.41. Let's say she wrote three buyers contract. She'd have a positive variance of 2.59, Diane, you're gonna kill it financially this month. Every month, Diane has to make $5,495 just from working with buyers. Let's say this month she made $36,000, she would have a positive variance of $30,505 or be 84.74% ahead of her buyer's goal right? You no longer have to wait till December and go, my business is not running on all levels. You are able to now track each and every month just by simply holding up this magnifying glass and then determine what course of action do you want to take? How, how serious is your business truly to you? What does your business really mean to you and your family? And then if you go all the way down to the very bottom, you don't have to do anything based on what you populate, the numbers that you put in. So that's a total of three numbers, three seller numbers, three buyer numbers, right? One, two, three. If you go very down to the bottom, it's going to show you each and every month. Each and every month, Diane had to make, right, $27,473. Well, based on the numbers that she put into her model, Diane made 61,000. She's got a po positive variance for the month of 33,524, or she is ahead of her yearly goal by 122.04%. If Diane knew that had these numbers and she knew that she was able to accomplish this, would Diane not feel good about her business? Would she not have a high level of comfortability, putting her head in her pillow at night and being able to go to sleep, knowing that she's got an incredible real estate business. Folks, don't each and every one of you deserve this? I want to ask you a question. Is anybody taking a trip coming up? Anybody have to jump in a plane? Rich, you going to Las Vegas? Uh, no, my dad turned 70. I'm missing it. Anybody going to Vegas for the XP con? I'll anybody be there. Coming up? Joe's going to be there. I'll be there. Let me ask you a question. Janet, you're going to be there? I'm there. Would you, any of you guys jump on a plane with a pilot that didn't have a flight plan to get you to Las Vegas or where else you're going? Not a chance. Can I ask you a question? How are you able to run a successful business if you don't understand the plan for that business and how you have to execute so you can track it? This is your roadmap. This is your roadmap. And if you stay on this, you can't help but be successful. The last thing that I'll quickly go over with you is if you go into the prospecting tracker, and I was not going to do this because I talk about prospecting so much, but yes, I track the activities that work for me, right? What I did is each and every day I took, spent, I wanted to track how much time I spent prospecting, what activities I did, and the number of contacts I made or people that I put into my database, potential contacts. I was then able to track not only the things that I like to do, the activities I like to do, but what I was able to track is which, which activities work the best for me. So in answer to your question, I forget who asked me, it wasn't Paula, I forget who asked me this question before, but yes, I was keenly aware, you know, how much time I spent each and every day doing the things that I needed to do, and then being able to track those activities that work the best for me. I hope this was helpful and I'm here to answer any questions. So let's see what's come up for you. Comments, questions. Diane, thank you, by the way, you're great. And I know I didn't give you a whole lot of room to talk because I wanted to get through this activity. Thank you, I, that helped me because I'm really horrible with those kind of spreadsheets. So just make, seeing how simple it was will make me, and I probably other people just go, I'm just, all right, so I don't know about other people, but I'm gonna tell you, I don't know how to use an Excel spreadsheet. This was created for me. The only thing I want you to focus on is color by numbers. There are 12 questions that you're gonna ask yourself and you're gonna plug into the model. And there's six numbers that you're gonna plug in each and every month to see if you are ahead or behind what you, need, what you need to do, right? You're gonna see if you're executing or not. So don't get caught up in Excel spreadsheets. Only focus on putting in 12 numbers, 
So you could put your model in place, then at the end of every month, you're going to plug in six numbers, numbers to ensure that your business is on track. So I want to dummy this down. No confusion here. I do not know how to use Excel. <laughs> Eric, quick question here on the chat comment, and then um, uh, we'll go to uh, 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 Kimbo, because I think he was just going to speak. I was talk right on top of him. Um, good baseline for a new agent, over the moon goal, keep it simple. These are just basic uh, trifecta questions from Chris Bailey. Keep your goals simple, but I want your goals to be a stretch. Anything that's worth anything is worth working for. Your goals need to be a stretch. I mean, I mean any, any of the coaches, including Rich who's speaking right now, Elizabeth, Mike Sherrard, Kirk Shewell, um, Gail, Joe, who am I, I feel like I'm missing somebody, Hank. Um, the reality is that each and every one of them have lofty goals. You can't achieve greatness if your goals aren't great. Don't make your goals a layup. Make your goals a stretch. You need to look back over your shoulder and go, holy crap, look what I was able to accomplish. That's when you really develop a keen relationship with yourself. Great to do this. Uh, if you apply Incre incredible. That's incredible. Um, in the model, wh where would you put that goal? Is that your personal goal right now? Is that an arbitrary number that you put? What are um, my goals? Yeah, the, what, the example that you gave today. So, um, you mean Di Diane's goals? Are you, are you asking me what my goals are? So I apologize. So yeah, okay, that was Diane's goal. Excellent. It was Diane's goal. Sorry, Chris. They're Diane's goals. Take your bills, Chris. Add 20% for savings, factor in taxes, and reverse engineer your goal. Oh, I like that one. That's good. All right. Perfect. Chris, per put that personality to work for you, and you'll do just fine. Big smile, you're already there. Just connect with people. Focus on connecting with people. Focus on getting the appointment and going out in the appointment and connecting. And this is not a hard business. I sometimes listen to the questions in the chat and quite honestly, I'll scratch my head and thinking, you're so overcomplicating this. What I loved about what Elizabeth shared two weeks ago, I was smiling all day from ear to ear, is the simplicity of how she goes about building her business. It's just about connecting. Don't, you don't need every template that Joe and Rich and Elizabeth and Mike and Kurt has shared with you. You don't need all of those templates. Less is more. You need to focus on simply going out there and connecting with people. That's the key to the business. And I don't care if it's agent attraction. I don't care if it's production. I don't care if you're selling widgets or investment banking products. You want to be successful? Connect with people and spend most of your day doing that. There's your business plan. Right on. Man, you're, you're so motivational. I have a question for you. Please. So you just mentioned uh, that four years ago, you, you didn't have a single dime in your bank account. You were bankrupt. I was bankrupt. Right? What or who was it that brought you out of that? What happened at that point? And how did you get out of that situation? I just, I'm just interested in knowing. Kimberly, you're going to make me cry. So I talked about this last Friday. Okay, okay, Elizabeth. okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be, I, honest, I, with I'll be really <laughs> honest with you. So I was, I come, you know, I come from a family of overachievers. You know, I'm the middle child, which should tell you a lot, right? I'm that problem middle child, it's just who I am. My brother's a doctor in Charlotte. My sister's a doctor. Her brother in law's a doctor. And I was, the, I was the screw up, you know? I played beach volleyball in Hermosa until I was 30. I had a very wealthy aunt who supported my habits. And at 30 years old, she said, you know, I'm tired of enabling you not to be successful. This is the gravy train is over. And I hit it big in real estate. And then I rode the I rode the crest for a while, and then at 58, the unthinkable happened. I wound up losing everything. I mean, everything to my name. And I have one child who is the love of my life. And um, I hate talking about this. And I had one child who's the love of my life, and school didn't come easy. He was raised in Northern California, and I always said, Jackson, if you work hard, I'll send you to any college you want to go to. And Jackson worked really hard and he got into Syracuse University in upstate New York. Best we, choice he ever made. It's a private school. It's about $80,000 a year. And I'm a proud man, just like, you know, I'm a proud father, like all of you are proud parents. And I had to look at him with tears rolling down my face and say, Jackson, you know, I can't afford to pay for your college. His stepfather at that time was kind enough to pay for his college education. The truth be told, I didn't know how he was going to put a roof over my head or put food on the table. I had to ask my brother and sister for $2,500. I mean, they thought that I lost my mind. And I had heard about the EXP model three years prior, and I spent three years trying to vociferate why this model wouldn't work, trying to blow holes into the model. 
when I came to realize is there were no holes that needed to be plugged. The model allowed agents like you and I to have tools and systems to ensure that we would sell a lot of real estate, we'd have a high level of production. And it allowed us multiple income streams. And I think we could all agree multiple income streams is better than one. And it gave us the opportunity of ownership into this incredible brokerage and have the good fortune of having a revenue stream. So we now could get paid like a broker without having any, any terrible responsibilities of being a broker. And I think, Kimball, what, what drove me is the love that I have for my son and never wanted to feel. I appreciate that. That I was a failure. You know, I never wanted to feel like I was a... Your heart's too big, Eric. You can't. Thank, you know, you Eric, Eric, like listen, Eric, Eric, thank you for being vulnerable, man, because guess what? A lot of us are you. We may be afraid to admit that. We, we may be hiding behind a veil, but we are you. And I and I thank you for opening up your heart and being transparent and sharing that with us. Hopefully it's motivating enough for some of us on this call to get their asses up and do what we need to do to get the job done. I just, I never wanted to feel like fraudulent to him. I wanted to mirror positive behavior. And I would have crawled over mountains or sw swam through rivers. And I, you know, at 58 years old, it was easy to kind of back out. I'm 62 years and I kept my head down. I kept my mouth shut and I worked in a way that I never thought I'd have to work at 58. And now I look back and I think, wow, I'm so happy. I feel so accomplished. Not that I'm better or worse than anybody else, but I feel like I feel like I was able to live up to the promise and now take care of him in a way that I never dreamed, I never thought possible four years ago. And I'm so thankful. I'm so blessed. I'm so appreciative. But I didn't want to go out in the bottom. I wanted to feel like I was going out on top and I wanted to have a relationship. And I think when, I think it would have been easy to have folded the tank and said, you know, life threw me a shitty deck of cards, a shitty hand of cards. And it just didn't make sense to do that. So I hope I answered your question. You did more than what I expected. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, Eric, it's funny that you say that because uh, I started thinking like the last six years of my life, like, you know, all the learning and struggles that you have to go through to build a revenue share organization, right? You did it in half the time that I did it, but you experienced it intensely, right? But maybe even more intensely because of the speed in which you got there. But, you know, like one of the things that I always say to my wife is, you know, all the things that we can afford now are not so important to me, but the confidence and self-respect that I was able to build by doing tough things has been an enlightening part of this that I never even saw as a necessary step. Uh, but anyway, I just, stories like that are very inspiring to me too, man. No matter where you're sitting, you're like, you hear something like that and you're like, holy smokes. That's pretty awesome, buddy. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate all that you do. It's crazy. <laughs> Kimbo was right. Everybody's got a story. Kimbo, you're right. Eric's just one of us, man. He's the real deal. We've all got our stories. And uh, Kimbo, you've got yours. So everybody on this call, like Kimbo just told you, yeah. grab yeah. a hold of that and ride that train. Eric, Rick, Rich just gave you guys a hint. Some people can get there twice as fast as somebody else. It's not the speed of your locomotive. It's just the path you're taking. So you decide how fast you want to get there. You go alone. You can get there. It just might take you longer. You go with the rest of us, we'll get you there a lot faster. That's all. Yeah. Lisa, you got a question? Woo, that's hard to follow. That's amazing, Eric. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you're so giving and generous. And we we are definitely, um, I'm not going to put this to waste, that's for sure. Um, but yes, uh, my question is, um, I run a team now. So figuring these um, items out, would it be better for me to do, I, I'm also in production, I'm also focusing on agent attraction, so I'm kind of scattered. Um, what do you recommend that I do with this actual model for, for my situation? So I don't know. I love I love Elizabeth's and 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 I like I like Kurt's take on this, Joe's take on this, all of the coaches. But from my vantage point, you know, I think that when you're in production, when you're selling real estate, it's easy to build a rough share organization. Why? Right. Not one of us in today's call ever got a real estate license to recruit agents. Right. We got our real estate license because we like real estate. We want to work with buyers and sellers. But I think we could all agree if you're selling real estate, 
right? You're either listening to an offer or making an offer. So a conversation exists between you and the agent on the opposite side of a transaction. So there's a dialogue, there's a conversation. It's a simple add-on to a conversation that's already taking place. Lisa, really enjoy this transaction working with you. Lisa, would you be open-minded to exploring a brokerage platform that allows you to keep more of your hard-earned commissions? And maybe, Lisa, aligns with the long-term direction you'd like to take your real estate business by offering you multiple, multiple streams of income, one of which happens to be passive. Is this, Lisa, something you might find compelling? And would you be simply open-minded to exploring with me? So I don't uh, think it has to be one or the other. <laughs> I think it is a combination of both. And I think if you, you know, it's about getting, what I love about agent attraction is, you know exactly who your audience is, right, Lisa? It's other agents. When you're an agent, you're out there, you know, trying to identify buyers and sellers. That's like, you're really sifting for gold. That buyer and seller could come from anywhere, but your audience is clearly defined. Start with the agents that you're doing transactions with, former friends in the business, colleagues that are at um, association meetings with you that are part of the local board, that are at your lender events or your title events, doesn't have to be one or the other. It could be a combination of both. So do you recommend those um, being part of this um, model, like put those uh, actual goals in there as well? Or how does that work? I mean, I haven't. I, I, I'm very in tune with what my conversion ratios are, 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 but I did not create an economic model for agent attraction. So, so I mean, my team, do I put all of my team goals in here too? So say I, I'm uh, referring out my buyers, for instance, for the most part, right? So is this going to be my full business uh, team included, or do I do it separately for my own production? You do, because you want somebody to be able to look at their numbers and then come to you each and every month with those six numbers filled out. And if they can't take the time to take three minutes and plug in six numbers, what does that indicate to you? You don't have to read between the lines here, right? The beautiful thing is that magnifying glass. It's holding it up and telling you, are they underperforming? Are they overperforming? Are they taking their business seriously? So I would sit down and show them, go through the model, have the model done with each and every one of them, and then hold their, hold, hold their feet to the fire, hold them accountable. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Eric, can you say that one more time? <laughs> what did I just say? You were talking with the, the other agent. <laughs> say it again. When you talk to the other agent, you just did a transaction. You did it so smooth. So I say. Open-minded. So it's the open-minded question. So what, I, what I'll typically say is I'll build rapport with them, you know. So really nice having a transaction. How long have you been at KW now? What do you like best of being at KW? What would you do to change or modify your experience? In other words, what don't you like? They'll be giving you your pain points. And what I typically say is the following. I don't typically say, I always say. I'll say, um, Scott, would you be open-minded to exploring a brokerage platform that allows you to keep more of your hard-earned commissions? And maybe, Scott, aligns with the long-term direction you'd like to take your real estate business by offering you multiple, multiple streams of income, one of which happens to be passive. Is that something you might find compelling? Would you be open to simply exploring this? Would you be open-minded to simply exploring this with me? Absolutely. I have this on video if anybody wants it. I think we should all say that. Why not, right? Thank you very much. That sounds great. You're more than welcome. You're all more right. than welcome. It, Eric, um, we are grateful for you, for all that you have done, everything. Thank you for sharing. Uh, You're welcome. Eric, we'll be back for Q&A, guys, so make sure you've got that on your calendar. Um, that was, uh, and this will be uploaded today, by the way, so that you can go back and watch it again with his economic model spreadsheet. Uh, for those who ask, Lisa, uh, just to let you know, all of you have the attraction challenge starts next month. You already are here. Ooh, look, I see smiles from some people on here too. There you go. All right. So stay hey, Rob, I just want to say one last thing. I want to thank Rob because I think you spend so much time thanking all the coaches. And you have created a traction flow. You have really broken the coaching model in a way that nobody else has by really incorporating, bringing people together. So I wanted to acknowledge you for a second because I think you spend so much time acknowledging us. And then I also wanted to say to Kurt, to Elizabeth, to Mike, to Hank, to Rich, to Joe, 
I feel like I'm forgetting to Gail. I feel like I'm always forgetting somebody. You know, I've learned so, so much from each and every one of them. What an incredible opportunity to learn from such talented, successful people. This has been the best platform that I've seen in my almost 30 years in this business where people are just pouring into you. I really hope that you embrace that and will take advantage of that so you can have the results that you're looking for. Very cool. Awesome. Anybody else have anything? Kurt? Joe? Anybody? Good. And Good Joe. Show. I hope I mentioned Joe. Sorry. <laughs> I, work, I work with Joe all the time. So Joe, I didn't forget you, pal. <laughs> Eat Eric's advice. That's that's the last word is do what Eric just told you guys. You guys, you guys are in this program for a reason. There's your direction. Follow it this week. I'm telling you, he's spot on. There's nothing he told you that isn't absolutely top of the line right there. Thanks, Kurt. All right. With that, Eric, again, thank you. We are all grateful to you. You're more than welcome. All of you guys, all of the coaches, all of you guys as uh, agents participating. Lots of fun stuff coming up, so stay tuned. Be here. All right? Make it a fantastic day. Bye. Thanks,